Welcome into the Sleep Wire Great Debate Show, everybody, where we do a quick debate style argument between two players. I am your host, Professor Chris, and with me is special guest Anthony Servino, host of the FF Face Off. You can find him on Twitter at the Real NFL Guru. Anthony, how's it going, man? Welcome to the Great Debate. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This will be the second time we've had you on the show. We had you on the uh, just the main Sleeper Wire Thursday show, you and Michael earlier in the yeah. offseason. And that was fun. Yeah, it was. It was. We got to have us both back on again. Well, if we could do a three way debate, that'd be great. I got to figure out how that would work. <laughs> oh, so here's how the show goes, man. We each have a player that we are arguing for. We get two minutes to argue for our player. We get 90 seconds for a rebuttal. And then we finish it up with final thoughts on our player. And that's it. That's the show. Uh, so this week we are debating running backs. It's been a while since we've really talked about running backs on the great debate. We've done, you know, tight ends once, usually it's wide receivers, but running backs this week and two guys who you definitely want to consider adding Wayne Gallman and JD McKissick. I have McKissick and you have Gallman and Anthony, if that's okay, I will kick us off here. Absolutely. All right. Let me pull up my stopwatch here just to make sure that I keep myself in track on track and I'm going to go ahead and hop into it. So for J.D. McKissick, he is definitely more rostered than we usually like to have for these great debates. So we usually try to keep it to guys who are 50% or fewer. Right now, he's rostered in 69% of Yahoo leagues, and that is almost certainly going to go up after this week. Now, McKissick has been pretty good for PPR for most of the season, actually. The last six games... 8, 8, 6, 2, 14, and 15 targets. That's right, 29 targets in the last two games. That's an insane number for a running back. I honestly believed that the 14 targets in week nine was a fluke, and it certainly appears that I was wrong. He followed that up with 15 targets this past week in a high-scoring game against the Lions. As a fantasy community, we were all really excited to see what Antonio Gibson was going to do for the Washington football team. He's so versatile, we thought he'd be great in the passing game. Well, he's just not getting the usage there. It is J.D. McKissick, and it's especially J.D. McKissick with Alex Smith. Historically speaking, Alex Smith has always been a check down guy. He looks for his first read, which is usually Terry McLaurin. And if it's not there, he throws it to his running back on passing plays and really more plays than not. It's been McKissick and not Gibson. McKissick already has a career high in targets, receptions, and receiving yards. In his first four seasons, his highest target total was 46, highest receptions was 34, and most yards was 266. He's already beat that. He's on pace to blow that out of the water. Alex Smith is the quarterback of this team, and that is always great for the running backs, especially the receiving backs. Now I did mention that he had two targets in or yeah, in week seven, that was against Dallas where the Washington football team just destroyed them 25 to three. There was no need for them to, you know, check down. And plus it was also not Alex Smith at the time it was Kyle Allen. No need to check down that often when you're up the entire game against third string quarterbacks. Now, most receiving backs are their team's third down guy and up. Uh, that's my two minutes. I'll stop myself right there. Anthony, let's move over to you. You got 90 seconds for a rebuttal. Take it away. Now, am I supposed to be going on Wayne Gallman or on McKissick right now? 90 seconds against McKissick. I don't know if I have a, a ton of bad to say about J.D. McKissick because I was in on J.D. McKissick this offseason. I always thought he was going to have a role in this offense uh, because Washington did prioritize uh, J.T. McKissick over Peyton Barber and free agency. Uh, but, yeah, as you had said, uh, Antonio Gibson was supposed to be the guy, and he is the guy. But in the past few games, J.D. McKissick has been outstanding in PPR. My issue – with J.D. McKissick is he doesn't have a very high rushing floor. So if there's going to be a game where he doesn't get significant target share, J.D. McKissick is not going to have a, a, you know, a double-digit PPR point outing. And, and I try to use, like, for low-end guys like J.D. McKissick, I, I like that 10 points in PPR as my barometer. So if you take away the targets, J.D. McKissick really doesn't have the floor. Uh, and that's my biggest issue with J.D. McKissick. He's very game flow dependent. All right, let's move over to Wayne Gallman. Anthony, two minutes on the clock. 
Now, Wayne Gallman is a player that I really liked, and really in the past two seasons, uh, we've heard mixed reactions from Wayne Gallman, uh, especially this offseason. The Giants actually said, hey, if something happened to Saquon Barkley, we feel confident in Wayne Gallman. Uh, Saquon goes down, Wayne Gallman's sitting there, and they go out and sign Devonta Freeman, a, a, a regressing running back, you know, two years removed from, uh, from an injury. Wayne Gallman... Uh, Devonta Freeman last year in Atlanta was a shell of himself, and it carried over to New York. Um, an interesting tidbit on Wayne Gallman. Um, in the past two years, he's had five games with double-digit uh, touches, including yesterday. Wayne Gallman has scored in every one of those games. Currently, Wayne Gallman uh, is on a four-game scoring streak that began back in week, I, I believe, week six or seven against Philadelphia, uh, which was also the game that Devonta Freeman went down. Uh, since Freeman has been gone, Wayne Gallman has scored a touchdown in every game. Uh, he's getting okay yardage. He's involved in the passing game, but most importantly, he's had 13 plus PPR points in four, all four of those games since week seven. And now that Devonta Freeman's on IR, his season is likely done. I believe Wayne Gallman, if you look at the Giants' schedule for the rest of the way, he could be a potential league winner, and he's available. I think I saw in over 50% of leagues at Yahoo and over 30% of leagues um, only roster him at ESPN. Is that all you had for him? Yeah. Still got about 20 seconds. No, that, that, all that's right. all I thought on Wayne Gallman. <laughs> all right. So with Wayne Gallman, you're just crossing your fingers for a touchdown with this guy. That is it. His last four games, 10 carries for 34 yards, 12 for 44, 14 for 68, 18 for 53. Only 10 total targets in the last four games as well. I mean, that's not really getting targeted in the passing game, 10 targets in four games. If he doesn't get into the end zone, he's killing your roster. He's also on a bye this week, so you're not going to be able to play him this week. Then the following week, week 12, that's Thanksgiving week, which is the one week in the middle of the season where there are no teams on by so you're not going to be missing anyone due to bye weeks there's a very good chance that you've got better starting options on your team than Wayne Gallman and then after that it's week 13 and only the Panthers and the Bucks are on by that's Christian McCaffrey slash Mike Davis and then Ronald Jones or Leonard Fournette whichever guy it's going to be let's face it I mean you're going to have a hard time getting Wayne Gallman into your lineup at all the next three weeks unless you've been absolutely crushed by injury, which, you know, it's 2020. Maybe you have, but it's, you know, with I the bye have. week and then, <laughs> yeah, with the bye week and then every team playing and then only Christian McCaffrey and Ronald Jones out, I feel like you're not really going to have a chance to get Wayne Gallman into your lineup. So it might just be a waste of that uh, waiver wire pick. All right, let's uh, move into final thoughts here. So I'm going to take it back to J.D. McKissick. So as I was saying, most receiving backs are their team's third down guy. But that has actually not been the case with J.D. McKissick. On his 62 targets this season, 66% of them, two-thirds of them, have come on first second down. They use him no matter where they are on the field. He's not a red zone guy or a between-the-20s guy. Alex Smith seems to target McKissick every chance he gets when Terry McLaurin is covered. In the upcoming games, Washington is at home against Cincinnati, then at Dallas, and then at Pittsburgh. The game against the Bengals has the potential to be a high-scoring game, and then in three weeks, they're most likely going to be down quickly against Pittsburgh and need to throw the ball. The Steelers have a great run defense, so it's going to be hard to play Antonio Gibson, but there's a really good chance you'll want to play McKissick in that matchup. You know, uh, contrary to you, I, I think there are a lot of teams out there um, that have injury plagued rosters. I, I know I'm starting guys like Galman and McKissick in the same roster in some of my leagues. So I really need a Wayne Galman on my team. Uh, is that due to as, is that due to bye weeks or injury? Injury, man. Okay. I mean, when I say I have three or four 49ers players, three of them <laughs> are running backs on the same injured reserve. Plus, they have like, like I literally roster their whole backfield in some leagues. Um, <laughs> that, that, takes up, that takes up an entire bench. It's 2020. 
I know, and, man. you know, a guy like Wayne Gallman can potentially win you a season. He's been more productive than Jonathan Taylor over the course of, the, of this month. I saw a tweet uh, from Ryan McDowell from yesterday saying that over the past month, Wayne Gallman is the RB3 behind Alvin Kamara and Dalvin Cook. That's how productive he is. And really, there's nobody else there. Um McKissick is sharing passing down work, and really he's the primary guy in Washington, but he's still sharing workload with JD with uh, Antonio Gibson, where it's Wayne Gallman, Deion Lewis, Alfred Morris. Come on. Wayne Gallman has separated himself in this backfield to where he should uh, see the lion's share of the touches every single game. And again, upcoming schedule. Uh, at Cincinnati, at Seattle, Arizona, Cleveland. Now where it gets tough is at Baltimore in a fantasy uh, championship week 16. I'm not going to use Galvin in that spot. But leading up to it, I, I think there's plenty of opportunity for Wayne Galvin to cash in. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this week's Great Debate. Anthony, thanks for joining me, man. This is a fun, uh, fun, quick show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. Why I think you we tell- can get Mike Hoff on here, my partner over at the FF Faceoff. We could do a, you know, a little three-way debate on three different players. <laughs> Maybe we'll see if we can do that closer to the end of the season. Uh, why don't you uh, remind everybody where they can follow you and support you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and at all the top social media and podcast platforms at the Real NFL Guru, and also my show at the FF Face Off. We do mostly, you know, a lot of live streams, a lot of live Q and A on YouTube, Periscope, and, and and Twitch. So check us out and give us a follow. And and if you have any fantasy questions, especially, make sure you ask them live on the show. We literally will stay around till every single one is answered. And you can follow us on Twitter at Sleepwire Show, and I'm on there at Prof underscore Chris SW. And you can hit me up on the Sleeper app at Professor Chris as well. Anthony, thanks again, man. This was a good one. Everybody else, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next week.